Dear brothers and sisters, there is one dua that I want you to say so frequently after this khutbah, and I'm just going to say it from the very beginning, insha'Allah ta'ala, that it becomes a regular part of your dhikr. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for us, and He is the best disposer of our affairs. And you know, subhanAllah, the best du'as, the ones that the Prophet ﷺ prescribed to us that unlock the greatest blessings in our lives, sometimes when you're reading the rewards of these du'as, they're so unbelievable that you're just like, is it really possible that with one sentence, so much can come out? They are usually the du'as that have the greatest level of a combination of vulnerability and submission combined. And so you find, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith aslih li sha'ni kullah wa la takinni ila nafsi tarfata'in. The famous hadith that we've spoken about, O oh, Hayyu Ya Qayyum, O oh, ever living, O oh, ever sustaining, in your mercy I put my trust. Rectify all of my affairs and do not leave me to myself even for the blink of an eye. So you're submitting every function to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes over every one of your functions and your affairs and you're at peace. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al There is no God but you. How perfect are you? I was from the transgressors. The dua of Yunus alayhi salam, Jonah peace be upon him. That the Prophet ﷺ said, no one says that dua except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer their need when they make that dua, when they make that dhikr. And here, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for me, and He is the best disposer of my affairs. This is something that comes reflexively almost to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ when they face hardship. And it usually comes in the most desperate of circumstances and situations. And the larger the obstacle grows, the more important and harder it is to remember that Allah is greater than whatever obstacle is in front of you. Our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, hadithatul ifk, the slander of Aisha radiallahu anha. She leaned on two statements of prophets that came before. She leaned on the statement of Ya'qub alayhi salam, Nama ashku bathi wa huzni Allah. I complain of my grief and my sadness only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she leaned on Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. She was saying, as she looked around and she saw, Ya Allah, I have no one here supporting me. The Sahaba, some of the Sahaba are passing the slander. I have no one on my side. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. She looked up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instinctively and said, Allah is enough for me. And He is the best disposer of my affairs in that moment of desperation. So I want us to look for a moment, inshaAllah ta'ala, as we are coming into the days of the Hijjah at our father Ibrahim alayhi salam and then our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I'm going to share some of the miracles of this dua that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala elucidates so beautifully from the various verses that are mentioned but before I get to the verses and what Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said of the various fawa'id the various benefits of this verse imagine Ibrahim alayhi salam your last words O Ibrahim alayhi salam imagine Ibrahim alayhi salam in front of the largest fire that anyone has ever seen, about to be catapulted into it, stripped of his clothes and his dignity and support. No one around him, everywhere he looks around, like Ta'if, which was the hardest day of the Prophet ﷺ's life. Any direction he looks in, all he sees is jeering and mockery and people egging on those that are going to throw him into the fire. He has no one, subhanAllah. I mean, that is trauma. Can't find a single person in the crowd that says, don't worry, you're okay. He doesn't have a, even a secret supporter amongst them that's standing in that crowd. All of them yelling, cheering, jeering, ready for him to be thrown into that fire, alayhi salatu was salam. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah says, كَانَ آخِرَ قَوْلِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ حِينَ أُلْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ the last words of Ibrahim alayhi salam as he was mid-air going into the fire. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for me and he's the best disposer of my affairs. As far as Ibrahim alayhi salam is concerned, this might be his last words, period. This might be the last phrase that he ever gets to say because he's being thrown into a fire. 
He is not privy to the plans that are to come. The angels are coming to him as we find in the narrations in Tafsir. Jibreel alayhi salam, do you need help? Amma ilayk fala. If it's from you, no. Other angels trying to think how they can support. The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanting to support him because they know this Khalil of Allah, this best friend of God is about to be thrown into the fire and killed so unjustly. Ibrahim alayhi salam says, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. These were his last words as he was being cast into the fire as Ibn Abbas عنهما, narrates in Sahih al-Bukhari. He also says عنهما, that Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. The last words that Ibrahim السلام, said when he was thrown into the fire. And it was said by Muhammad وسلم, and his companions when the hypocrites said to them, Inna nasa qad jama'u lakum. That verily your opponents have gathered an impossible army. When does this happen? After Uhud, when they're still bleeding, when they're burying the largest amount of mass casualties in the community that they have seen, and the hypocrites are loving this. They want to see a, a crack in the confidence of the Muslims. They want to see the Prophet ﷺ express a moment of confusion, a lack of clarity, a lack of purpose. They want to see him crumble sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They want to see the companions crumble. And Abu Sufyan after Uhud gathered an even larger army. They smelled blood. They smelled blood. Literally they smelled blood. And so after Uhud when the Muslims were wounded they planned a second attack. And they gathered that army to attack right after. And the hypocrites came to the Muslims and said inna nasa qad jama'u lakum. You thought Uhud was bad. You thought Uhud was bad. Watch what happens to you now. You should see the army that is waiting to cut you into pieces. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna nasa qad jama'u lakum, that the hypocrites said that verily the people have gathered against you. Fakhshohum, fear them. The hypocrites are even trying to project the emotion that they think you should have. You should fear them. You should be very afraid right now. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Fazadahum imana. First, the reality on the inside, their faith in Allah was only increased. As much as they were told to fear people, they increased in their fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As much as they were told to give up because the people were going to overwhelm them, the more that their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grew. So their iman increased. The Prophet and the companions said, this is what they have been taught to say. Allah is enough for us and He is the best disposer of our affairs. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala actually had a ring in which he had Hasbunallah wa Ni'mal Wakil inscribed on it. And they asked Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala why out of all the phrases he chose to inscribe on his ring, he put Hasbunallah wa Ni'mal Wakil. He said because immediately after that verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضٍ لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوءٍ وَاتَّبَعُوا رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ ذُو فَضٍ عَظِيمٍ that they returned with the favor of Allah and with His bounty, no harm had touched them. And they pursued the pleasure of Allah and Allah is indeed the bestower of great bounty. So what came after it was miracle after miracle after miracle was the mercy and grace of Allah. Meaning if a person gets to that point, if they respond with Hasbun Allah wa Ni'mal Wakil, everything opens up after that. And SubhanAllah, you look at this verse and you look at these words. Hasbun Allah, I need no one else, I have Allah. Ni'mal wakil, I choose his planning. He's the best disposer of my affairs. I choose his planning over even my own planning. I would prefer his planning even over my own planning. And so I'm choosing Allah, hasbi Allah over people. Wa ni'mal wakil, and I'm choosing his plans even over my plans when it comes to what is ahead of me. And by the way, as the ulama mentioned, before I go into what Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, if you look at the verses, the common denominator here, the scholars mention here is that Allah is not someone you resort to only when no one else is there for you. Allah is someone that you resort to even when everyone else is there for you. Because the trust that Ibrahim alayhi salam had in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Decades later, when he's sitting with his eight children at that point and saying to them, what will you worship after me? And seeing his grandchildren and seeing his offspring worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fruit of his efforts, 
The trust that Ibrahim had in Allah at that moment was no less than the trust that he had in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the moment he was being thrown into the fire. And the trust that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and submission that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Fatih Mecca, on the day of the conquest of Mecca was no less than the trust that he had in Allah on the day of Uhud or when he was in the cave and it was only Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The idea was la tahzan inna Allah ma'ana do not grieve Allah is with us whether no one is with us or whether everybody is with us. Hasbun Allah, Allah is enough. I'm satisfied. I'm okay with Allah being enough. If no one else is left but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. And he's the best disposer of my affairs. Not that I have been able to find others and nothing has worked. And so now I'm just going to say, Ya Allah, I failed. So now you dispose of my affairs. No, Ya Allah, even when my planning is perfect, it will only succeed to the extent that you allow it to succeed. Dispose of my affairs, O oh Allah, as you see fit and as you see best. Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala then lists some of the miracles of this dua, some of the beautiful benefits of this dua. He says every time, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says every time Allah mentions in the Qur'an the statement, hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil, in some way, Allah is enough for us and he's the best disposer of our affairs, it comes with a combination of jalb al-manfa'a wa daf'i al-madarra wa fi daf'i al-madarra. It comes with the bearer of good news, benefit, and doing away with harm. It brings both benefit and it does away with harm. Every time Allah mentions it, He specifies that both of those things come into a person's life as a result of that. So for example, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ The incident of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, when they responded to the hypocrites and they said, Allah is enough for us. And he's the best disposer of our affairs. They returned back with the blessing of Allah and His grace. Manfa'a, Allah's blessing, Allah's goodness coming to them, the benefit. And they will not be harmed. So the removal of harm. The presence of benefit, the removal of harm. Both combined as a result of that. And they pursued the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ قُلْ أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَرَادَنِي اللَّهُ بِضُرٍّ هَلْ هُنَّ كَاشِفَاتُ ضُرِّهِ أَوْ أَرَادَنِي بِرَحْمَةٍ هَلْ هُنَّ مُمْسِكَاتُ رَحْمَتِهِ قُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ يَتَوَكُّلُ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say to them, O Prophet, who created the heavens and the earth? And they will certainly say Allah. They will admit to you that God created the heavens and the earth. They will admit that much. Then ask them, these idols that you invoke besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah wills to harm me, could they undo any of that harm? If Allah wanted to harm me, would these idols be able to protect me from any of that harm? Or if Allah willed some mercy for me, some benefit for me, would they be able to prevent any of that mercy and that benefit from coming to me? قُلْ حَسْبِي Allah. Say to them, Allah is enough for me. And upon Him, the faithful put their trust. So scholars mention in this regard, subhanAllah, look at Ibrahim السلام, when he spoke to his father. لِمَا تَعْبُدُوا مَا لَا يَسْمَعُوا وَلَا يُبْصِرُوا وَلَا يُغْنِي عَنْكَ شَيْئًا You know when they say easier said than done, Ibrahim السلام, was speaking to his father about who he puts his trust in. He puts his trust in his idols. And Ibrahim Islam was speaking with the authority of a messenger of Allah, of God. He said, these things that you worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why do you worship things that don't hear you or see you or do anything for you? They can't protect themselves. That was the whole, that was the whole foundation of Ibrahim salam when he challenged them in regards to their idols. Do you think anything changed when Ibrahim salam was being cast into a fire and they were chanting about their idols? They weren't chanting about their idols, they were really chanting about themselves. And subhanAllah, as they were throwing him into the fire, they were parading their idols. And when they were facing the Prophet and his companions in Uhud, they were screaming out the names of Allat wal Uzza wa Hubal. They were screaming out the names of their idols. And in both situations, the Prophet 
And in the case of Nabiuna sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those that were with him, the companions, Hasbun Allah. Allah is enough for us. Allah is enough for us. And so in this verse, if Allah was going to decree harm for me, would these idols be able to protect me? And if Allah was going to decree mercy for me, would the idols be able to stop that mercy? In Aradani Allahu Bidur, if they wanted to hurt me, would they be able to do away with the dur? What Ibn al Qayyim rahimullah said, this does away with the harm. And if they wanted to benefit me, a manfa'a, if they wanted to bring about any mercy in my life, could they do so? Absolutely not. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Whoever is mindful of Allah, Allah will make a way out for them. Meaning, the, the removal of harm. Allah will make a way out for them, i.e. the removal of harm. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And Allah will provide for them in ways that they would not have even considered before. وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ and whoever puts their trust in Allah, Allah is enough for them. Every single time, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, every single time Allah mentions hasbi Allah wa ni'ma al-wakil in some way, it combines both the removal of harm and the paving the way for benefit and goodness to come into our lives. And this is especially true when you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and you still put your trust in the giver of all light when you can't see the way out, but you still put your trust in the one who makes ways in and makes ways out. When you can't see the reward of this world and you put your trust in the one who bestows reward in this world and in the afterlife and you submit yourself because the story of Ibrahim salam is istislam, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslimaini lak, submitting to you, O Allah, hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. And so my only reminder to you in this khutbah is to recognize the power of this dua and to say it both in your moments of personal distress as well as your moments of community distress, especially when you can't see the way out. That you know that the one who sees all has a way out decreed. Finally, Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that whoever says seven times in the morning and in the evening, Hasbi Allah, la ilaha illahu, alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arsh al azim. Hasbi Allah, la ilaha illahu. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ حَسْبِ Allah, Allah is enough for me. لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُو There is no God but Him. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ Upon Him I place my trust. وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ And He is the Lord of the mighty throne. Allah will be sufficient for Him against anything that grieves Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be our protector. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with us when no one else is with us or when everyone else is with us. May Allah be with us in moments of ease and in moments of hardship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure be with us in this life and in the next. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa risa'al muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu al-ghafur rahim.